hello I just wanted to check in it has been a little bit since my last upload um, I figured this time would be something a little different um, I have my camera set up in my room to kind of record everything I got a little nervous about it because like it records everything and I don't like to wear pants, so um, recently put the SD card in there. So we're gonna start, you know, to kind of show people what what I struggle with every day and like how hard it is for me to get out of bed or to do certain things. Um, that kind of shines a light on some of the things that people have no clue about. Um, just a couple of fun facts and I, Use that totally sarcasm. Sorry if you're offended. Um, Sjogren's effects 90% is just women. Uh, most women see early onset, you know, between 40 and 60. It's very slow progressing. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case with me. Um, it affects every part of your body. It's not just dry mouth, dry skin, dry eyes. Um, it's, it's not that it's just, that's what it's known for primarily, but it affects every part of your body, including your organs, you know, your blood, your brain, everything. Um, some of the more serious side effects are like kidney disease, a kidney failure, uh, lymphoma, collars disease, um, you know, when your body is constantly attacking itself and all the good cells, you kind of just opens the gateway up for anything and everything bad to happen. So it might take time to develop things, but without the proper medication to control it and slow things down, um, it's really, it's just war. Um, so those are some interesting things and of course fibromyalgia is just all over pain I, I mean with every disease and every every medication you know everything affects everybody differently and it, sometimes it affects you differently at different times in your life um, you know you one thing can work for you for two months and then it stops working and you have to start all over again and some things that work for some people that are like a guarantee won't work for other people. Um, so with that being said, you know, treatment is hard. And like with fibromyalgia, it's just an all over pain. Um, you know, it's, it's, it affects everywhere. And then, you know, usually with both of those come chronic fatigue or you have chronic fatigue separately. So, you know, when your body is in pain all of the time, I mean, just all of the time, it is hard for your mind to keep up. You know, your body's dying out, your mind is dying out. Suddenly, you're going nowhere fast. Um, so, it's really hard to have a, a life, a, a work life, a relationship, uh, friendships, you know, any kind of social atmosphere, you know, is just exhausting in and of itself. Um, and it's, it's, it's definitely hard when medicine doesn't help, um, or it's not doing what it should be doing, or it's taking three years to find the right one and still don't find the right one. Uh, the other day I was at my counseling session and almost, and I knew I was having an off day, like a, a more off day than normal, which is hard to believe. But, um, I, and I, this only happened to me a few times that I, I know of, but I was saying pretty much everything backwards or I was flip-flopping words um, but mostly I was quite literally speaking my sentences backwards and I was getting so frustrated with myself that finally my counselor just said Adrian it's okay and it's so frustrating when you're just trying to communicate and you can't even communicate you know and 
it gets like that a lot, but it never, I mean, I can't say never because it's been three times total that I know of that it has been that severe to where somebody has had to stop me. But it makes you think when you're by yourself, I mean, who knows? I don't have anybody here to assist. I mean, I have my kids, you know, sometimes, but I don't have anybody else to, you know, stop and say, hey, Adrian, you are like completely acting out of this world and I can't understand anything you're saying. Um, it's really kind of upsetting, honestly. It's embarrassing. It's shocking to people who haven't witnessed it, um, don't know what to do with it. So I just kind of came home and pretty much just cried most of the day. I was able to produce tears, so that's a good thing. Um, but it's extremely hard. Uh, these diseases that I have affect my life in every way. I mean, going from my hair turning white, to my skin, to my brain function, to my motor skills, to, you know, if I could have a job, um, standing, sitting, sleeping, thinking, writing, um, everything you could imagine is just shifted and controlled by something that people know so little about, doctors know so little about. and. It's like if they don't know, it really kind of leaves you with little hope. And I know you have to hold on to hope and you have to be strong. But after almost three years, it's like, how strong can you be? How long can you hold on hope for? And, you know, I do have one good friend out there who helps me through most all my times, actually. She's the one who edits these videos and helps me with this stuff. She also walks me through my uh, panic attacks that I have quite often. You would have to ask her how often, but very often. And I won't even be realizing I'm having one. And I will be messaging her or like most, most likely voice messaging her. And she will just have to tell me to stop. Just stop just breathe and she will walk me down essentially like just off the ledge like calm down Adrian you know and I won't even know how I got there you know it's like my brain just does this thing that I can't control sometimes a lot of times um I'm honestly not sure if there is a way to control it you know if I could control my pain level, I would. If I could control my motor skills, I would. If I could control this and this and this, I would. I try, but if I could fully control it, I sure the hell wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in, which is not working, being single, isolated. Um, I mean, I'm alone most all the time. And I do have a tendency to push people away, which kind of brings me into like my next section here is chronic illness, chronic fatigue in relationships, even friendships, relationships of all, all sorts. Let's just all sorts. Um, they are hard because, and this is just me, but I feel like other people out there would have to kind of be able to relate or will or have been able to relate uh, unless you're just extremely lucky and for that I'm extremely happy for you but finding someone who understands that some days you can't speak correctly you can barely move um, let's say you can move every day but it is extremely painful and with each step, it feels like your body's being ripped apart. Um, all your doctor's appointments, all your medical bills, how it affects your work. Uh, 
how it affects your sleep. You can't sleep and you're sitting next to somebody who's trying to sleep and you're tossing and turning and then, you know, you go downstairs and they don't want you to go downstairs. So then that's an issue. Um, trying to communicate how you feel feels impossible for me most of the time because as I was telling my good friend who does these videos, who helps me, um, she was talking about how she was sick, or she is sick, and I wish her well, but she was saying how she just can't imagine how my body, you know, how she feels, and then how my body is just like so rebellious, like it just fights its own self. And it's funny because when the first onset started to come on, I, I remember thinking, no one can possibly feel this way. And that's how it started. It was like, no one can feel this way. No one, and day by day, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And it got to the point to where it was like, no one could actually feel this way, be semi-happy, and not like go jump off a bridge. Like, I'm sorry, but there's just, there's no way. So I, it's funny whenever things like that get pointed out and it makes me think when I originally had that thought, what, what I was feeling like, you know, and how different it is now and how much worse it is now every single day. It's worse and worse and worse. It might be a different way. It might ease up th this way, but it's going to get worse this way. It's just the way it's been rolling for almost three years now. But it's crazy to think that, you know, you went, I went from living this healthy, active lifestyle, you know, with a, a good paying job and my kids were happy, you know, I was engaged and then boom. It's like my world was turned upside down and it's never went back. And to be quite honest, I can't even remember what it felt like to feel, to feel the sensations in the everyday life before I got sick. I would just remember thinking no one can live like this. This, this can't be normal. Um... So, you know, it's hard to let people in when you know that if, and this is not to sound rude, but it's almost like there have to be a caretaker. Like, I don't have people to help me out, really, except my friend who lives an hour away. Other than that, I don't have a reliable source, necessarily, I can call who would be here. So it's like building a relationship and not being able to get out of bed or go to him, his or her family functions or, you know, it's hard enough for me to go to my son's parent-teacher conference. Um, just do the basic things. It's like I struggle to shower and wash my hair. That 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 is literally an obstacle for me. So, um, you know... It, it just makes me think I'm a burden on people. And I feel like that's a pretty normal thought. You know, if I can't take care of myself, why would somebody else want to take care of me? It's not like I had somebody with me this entire time who was with me before and understood. I wasn't that lucky. So, you know, it's different for everybody. But it's just some food for thought. Uh, I highly recommend, um, meditation, yoga, chiropractor, go to your doctor's appointments. Um, if you have a loved one, I am so happy for you. Um, you know, don't let this disease control your life to the point to where you won't let people in. So these diseases, they cause a lot of mental illness as well. And, you know, it's just this opening of letting all of this stuff in at once and 
your mind doesn't know what to do with it. And unfortunately, it has affected me uh, pretty bad. I held on really strong for the first year and a half, you know. And then even, you know, until recently with the clinical trials keep getting pushed off and medicine keeps not working. Um, that's a little disheartening, but I see my kids and they light up my life. Every time they leave, I just bawl my eyes out. Like, I just, as soon as that door shuts, I am on the ground crying. You know, I'm here by myself. I, I look around. There's, you know, it's the same thing. I don't really have friends. I've always been pretty antisocial. Grew up not the best. You know, taught not to trust people because they'll hurt you. And sadly, that's kind of what's happened my whole life. Um, and now I'm not able to work, at least not right now. And that's really hard because I've always been a worker. Um... So, don't, don't let it get the best of you. Um, I know some of my videos show me at my worst, but I hope you can find inspiration in that and, you know, see that I'm trying to do a little better now. So, anyways, I just thought I would share that with you if you have questions or comments. Um... Just put them down below. Uh, if you could subscribe to me, that would be great. And I appreciate everything. And like I said, if you have any information or thoughts or ideas, I'm on like a lot of Facebook groups. Um, so we kind of all help each other out with different things. But I am always open to hearing things. Um, asking my doctors about new things that somebody told me. A lot of times they say that's how they you know, they find these new things that might help other people is by word of mouth, by people who actually suffer from these things. So thank you for watching my video.